Yo, is your sensitivity trash? You don't hit your shots, kid? Your crosshair placement is all over the place? And you have stick drift on your controller? Well, lucky enough for you, you came to the right place. Because in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to find your perfect sensitivity. By the end of this video, you'll have your perfect build mode, edit mode, look sensitivity, ADS sensitivity, and dead zone. Before we get into this video, just consider heading right down below and dropping a quick sub for me. I'm waiting. No? Yes? There we go. All right, cool. Let's get right into the video. First things first, guys, I'm going to show you how to find your perfect aim down sight sensitivity. So let's get into that. So as some of you guys already know, I do have my very own aim trainer, and we're going to be using this map here to help us find our ADS sense. And the code for this map will be in the description so you can use it too. In our settings, you guys will notice that there's horizontal and vertical speed for our ADS sensitivity. So we're actually going to be breaking this down and tackling each of these on their own. So first things first, we're going to start with our horizontal speed. Just so you guys have a base place to start, I would recommend copying my settings here and then adjusting them as we go so what we're going to do is we're going to head into horizontal tracking right here and then when you click start you'll notice that a bot will start moving across just like this so what we're actually going to do here is we're just going to try to track the bot as well as we possibly can we're not even going to shoot it once so when you guys are tracking the bot there's one thing that you really need to know to find your perfect sensitivity if you find yourself in a situation where your crosshair is constantly in front of the bot that means that your sensitivity is too fast so what you guys are going to want to do is slowly lower your sense until you can perfectly track the bot just like this but on the other side your sensitivity can be too slow as well so if you find yourself in a situation where you're constantly tracking behind the bot that means that your sensitivity is too fast and you need to raise it a little bit so again just keep raising your sense until you can perfectly track the bot and once you can track the bot throughout the whole course that means that you you found your perfect horizontal sensitivity. Here's another really good tip that I have for you guys. If you look down here, you'll notice that I am a linear player, so this is what I do to combat that. Right up here in ADS sensitivity, you'll notice that I have 3% for both my horizontal and vertical boost. And what this does is it basically makes my aim exponential. And as many of you guys probably know, exponential is a much better input curve when it comes to aiming. So if you guys play linear just like me, consider coming up here and turning on your boost as well. I would recommend anywhere between 2 and 6%. So while you're testing out your horizontal speed here, consider changing your horizontal boost as well. Because because this could make a really big difference for you. But all right, now that you guys found your perfect horizontal sensitivity, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but for our vertical sensitivity. So we're gonna go right in here to vertical tracking and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did. So once you click start, you'll notice that a bot will come out and he'll start going up and down. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna track the bot as well as you possibly can. And it will be hard when it touches the bottom, but just really focus on tracking it when it's in the air, just like this. So right now you'll notice that I can perfectly track the bot when it's in the air, just like this. So this means that my sensitivity is perfect. So just like with the horizontal track, if you're constantly tracking behind the bot, your sensitivity is too slow and you need to raise it. And if you're constantly tracking ahead of the bot, that means that your sensitivity is too fast and you need to lower it. So just follow the exact same steps that we did with the horizontal tracking and you'll find your perfect vertical tracking as well. All right, now that we found our perfect ADS sensitivity, the next thing I'm gonna be showing you guys how to find is going to be your look sensitivity. So there's gonna be two things that I'm gonna show you. For the first one, you're gonna wanna load into a creative with one of your friends. Then you're gonna wanna build a five by five platform under your feet. So as you can tell, I have one, two, three, four, five and then one, two, three, four, five that way as well. So then all you're gonna do is you're gonna stand in the middle tile and you're gonna ask your friend to run along the outer ring. And then once they start running, you're just gonna track them just like we did in the horizontal and the vertical tracking. And just like we did before, you're gonna try to track them exactly on point. And if you're constantly behind them, that means your sensitivity is too slow and you need to raise it. And if you're constantly ahead of them, that means your sensitivity is too fast and you need to lower it. So if you are struggling, I would recommend starting on 40-40 for both your horizontal and your vertical speed. And then just keep adjusting it as you go along. All right, and then after you find your perfect sensitivity for tracking them on the outer ring, you're gonna ask your friend to move to the inner Inner ring right here and then just like we did before they're going to run along the inner ring and you're going to try to track them and if you did calculate your settings correctly then you should be able to track them perfectly once again but if you can't then make sure you keep adjusting it just like you did before for the outer ring so that's part one for finding your perfect look sensitivity but let's go ahead and jump into part two for this next part we're going to once again hop into my aim trainer but instead of utilizing the horizontal and the vertical tracking we're going to go ahead and jump into shotgun flicks and then once you click start you'll notice that a bunch of targets will start to drop down and then just like with everything else that we've been doing, if you're undershooting your target, that means that your sensitivity is too slow. So just raise it a little bit. And if you're overshooting your target, your sensitivity is too fast and you need to lower it. If you can't tell, this logic is a huge part of finding your perfect sensitivity. And also this shotgun flick training routine is one of the best ones that you can do. So make sure you guys practice this one if you want to have good shotgun aim. And with both of these tips for look sensitivity, you should be able to gather your perfect sensitivity. So now let's go ahead and jump into how to find your perfect dead zone sensitivity. So for your dead zone, you're just going to want to hop into another blank creative island. Then go into your settings and you're going to want to lower your dead zone all the way down to 5% for both your left stick and your right stick. 
Then what you're going to want to do is make little tiny micro movements with your right thumbstick. So all that a micro movement is, is little tiny movements just like this. And as you can tell, I do have stick drift when my dead zone is this low. So that's exactly what we're testing for. So if you do have stick drift on your controller, that means that your dead zone is too low and you need to raise it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go right back into settings and we're going to raise our dead zone. So it was on 5%. Now we're going to raise it up to 8% for both our left stick and our right stick. And then we're just going to rinse and repeat. We're going to do the exact same thing and make micro movements with our controller. So I'm making micro movements down. I don't have any. I'm making micro movements up. I don't have any stick drift. To the right, I don't have any stick drift. And to the left, I do still have stick drift. So once again, this means that my dead zone is still too low and I need to raise it a little bit more. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it on 10 for both of them. And then once again, just rinse and repeat. When you're doing this, just make sure to take your time because at first it might not seem like you have any stick drift, but it might be a certain direction that you do have stick drift. So as you can tell, I have none to the right, none up, none down, but to the left, if I get it just right, you will notice that I do have stick drift. As you can tell, there it is. I do have stick drift still. So then now I'm going to raise my dead zone to 12% for both of them. And now we should be a little bit better, if not good. So let's just test. I didn't have any up, down, or right. So let me just test left and we are good. So this means that 12% for my right stick is my perfect dead zone sensitivity. But if you guys could notice, there's still the left stick dead zone that we have to test. Left stick dead zone isn't nearly as important as right stick dead zone, but you still don't want any stick drift on your left stick. So let's just quickly make sure that we don't have any. To do this, we're just going to look straight down now. And now just like we do with our right stick, we're going to do the exact same thing with our left stick micro movements to the left micro movements down to the right up and then make sure you get all the other angles so after testing this for a little bit i've noticed that 12 percent is still good for my left stick as well so this means that 12 12 is my perfect dead zone sensitivity and remember that dead zone is different for every single controller so make sure you guys do this for yourself so you find your own perfect sensitivity all controllers are made different so this is something that you can't copy from your friend or a pro but since a lot of people are confused on what dead zone is and what it does let me just quickly explain this real quick before we move to the next step so if i raise my left stick dead zone up to 50% you'll notice that in the top corner that blue circle gets bigger and that blue circle is actually your dead zone and if you look inside you'll notice that there's a yellow circle as well and this actually activates when I move my thumbstick so as you can tell I'm moving my thumbstick right now and that yellow circle is moving as well but there's one key thing to take away from this your thumbstick won't actually move until that yellow circle goes outside of your dead zone so all this movement in here wouldn't actually move me in the game but once I'm outside here now I'm actually moving this is why it's so important to have the lowest dead zone sensitivity possible so you can have the most instant response on your thumbsticks. So when I lower it all the way down here to 12, you'll notice that I have an instant response on my thumbstick because right when it breaks that blue circle, it'll activate in the game. But you also don't want to have it too low so the random movement on your thumbstick doesn't accidentally activate. So if I lower my dead zone all the way down to 5%, you'll notice that the random movement in my thumbstick goes outside of that circle. So that's exactly what stick drift is and you don't want that. So just make sure that you find the perfect dead zone sensitivity for you and your controller so that you have the most instant response on your thumbsticks. If you guys have made it this far, you're doing very good and there's only one more thing that we need to do before you find your perfect sensitivity. But before we get into that, just please consider dropping a sub because I put a lot of work into this video and I'm trying to hit 30k before the end of the year. It's completely free and I would really appreciate it guys. But the final thing that we need to find is our build mode and our edit mode sensitivity. And these two are very easy to find, but let me just show you guys how to do it yourself. So to start off, let's find our perfect edit mode sensitivity. So for this, what you're going to want to do is just make a box completely around yourself. Then what you're going to want to do is just make a bunch of edits as fast as you possibly can on the wall in front of you. Just look at the way I'm editing. I'm just making a bunch of random edits and I'm really focusing on my crosshair placement. And just like with everything else that we've done in this video, you're going to use the exact same logic. But here it is a little bit different. So if you're flicking your crosshair all over the place and you notice that you're not really making any edits, that probably means that your sensitivity is too fast and you need to lower it. Because of course the goal with editing is to be fast, but at the same time you have to be consistent. So if you're not consistent, then your editing speed is probably too fast for you. So just keep lowering it until it feels comfortable for you and you can keep making those consistent edits. And on the other side, if your editing speed is too low, you'll notice that you're not really finishing your edits. So instead of it looking like this, it might look like this. And that means that your sensitivity is too slow and you need to raise it a little bit. So just use this logic here and rinse and repeat until you find your perfect edit mode sensitivity. This one will take a lot of testing, but just keep going and you will find your perfect sensitivity eventually. So after you find your edit mode sensitivity, you're going to jump into your build mode sensitivity. So it should come as no surprise to you guys that to find your build mode sensitivity, you're going to need to build a little bit. So what I would recommend doing is just free building for five minutes and not thinking about anything. Just build like you would normally build. After you're warmed up, you're going to want to actually start thinking about what you're doing. So if your crosshair is flicking all over the place and you're not really that smooth, that probably means that your sensitivity is too fast and you need to lower it. But if you're building and you can't turn quick enough to place your builds, that means that your build mode sensitivity is too slow and you need to raise it. So that's the simple logic for your build mode sensitivity and this one is a little bit more difficult to explain and you really need to just focus on this one for yourself. You also need to ask yourself the question of what do you want to do with your building? So if you want to spin around a lot like me, then you're going to want to have a fast sensitivity. I like to spin around when I build because I feel like it makes me a more diverse and smooth player. 
And to do this, I do need a fast sensitivity and it did take a lot of practice to become smooth on a fast sensitivity. So if you're not good on a fast sensitivity, then don't be discouraged yet because like I said, it takes a lot of practice. But if you just want to be a 100% smooth player, then go ahead and go with the low sensitivity because it's a lot easier to become smooth on it. But just make sure you don't go too low with your sensitivity because if you do, then you can't really do any cool moves. So just try to find the cool middle ground that you're comfortable on building on and that you feel smooth on as well. And then once you find that, that will be your perfect build mode sensitivity, guys. That's all I have for this video, guys, and I really hope you did find something useful in this video. And if you did find something useful and you want to support me a little bit more beyond clicking that subscribe button, consider coming into the item shop and throwing in code Vizalu. This is by far the best way to support me, and I really do appreciate every single one of you guys who use my code. And if you did enjoy this video, you'll definitely enjoy the one that I'm putting up on the screen right now as well. And if you made it this far in the video, just drop a yellow heart down in the comments so I know who the real ones are. But that's all I have for this video, so I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.